It's a shame a lot of people in Australia don't love the kangaroos because they are such a great animal. They really are, aren't you? How do we get so hoodwinked into believing that it was okay to kill our national icon? This is what they don't want you to see. That's what they don't want you to know. As Australians, we take them for granted that they're always going to be there. What if they're not? Well, Kangaroo is an explosive documentary breaking new ground and uncovering an unlikely truth. It unveils Australia's love-hate relationship with its beloved icon, which is proudly used by top companies, sports teams and as tourist souvenirs too. Multi-award winning documentary filmmaker and expat Kiwi, Kate McIntyre-Claire joins us now. Welcome, Kate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, interesting. So you made this documentary along with your husband, Mick. Um, what got you interested in the plight of the kangaroo? Well, I mean, you know, it's an amazing animal, of course. They're unique to Australia, our, as you said, our national icon. And we thought a film had never actually been done that really exposed why was this kangaroo our national icon. And it's so famous around the world, mm. not just in Australia. Mm. So we really wanted to unpack the whole kind of social, cultural connection that Australians had with kangaroos. How do yeah. the Australians treat the kangaroo? Well, that was what we found out as we kind of as we uncovered different things. The, one of the first interviews we got was the scientist told us, "Oh yes, this is the largest wildlife land massacre in the world," and we were like, "Really? Nobody knows that. Mm. How come none of us have kind of caught up?" And so we kind of realised as we unpacked the film that more and more things came to light that we had no idea about, and that's really why I guess it's become such a controversial mm. film. Many people in Australia see it as a pest don't they? That needs to be eradicated. Yeah, well, we made a real effort to film, like, the landowners, the farmers, the scientists, the government, to really find out where does this animal sit in the culture. And everyone's got such differing opinions of the kangaroo in Australia. You know, it's still a deeply held in Indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it is our third... Uh, it's the third most recognising uh, symbol in the world, and it also is totally what people want to come and see when they come to Australia. So yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be like us killing off our kiwis. It really, is isn't it? exactly like yeah. that, or the Chinese killing off their pandas. Like we made, I think we made forty-two billion dollars in tourism last year, mm. and everyone wants to come and see a kangaroo. And everyone loves the clip-on kangaroo, <laughs> don't they? They do. Yeah. It's interesting because my auntie lives in Australia, and when I was over there visiting, yeah. she has big bull, 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 bull bars on the front of her yes. truck, and basically. Yeah. She she told me you had a kangaroo if you see it. Right, yeah. Well, it's interesting. That's what we found during the film was that there's this, sort of this old um, pattern of hate mm. that's dated back right to colonial times, you know, when white people first came there, was, oh, we want this to look more like Europe. Let's clear everything, all the sort of local native flora and fauna. And, and interestingly, we found that that had come in the film right through to today, wow. where people don't kind of go, oh, my God, this is our greatest natural asset. Yeah. They go, oh, these guys are, you know, in our way of our European landscape. I mean, <laughs> but yet we'll put them on the on the back of our plane. Yes, we'll put them on our, on our rugby team. <laughs> everything, yeah. So kangaroos are being slaughtered. Mm. Are there any rules and regulations in place about how that can be done? Yeah, there's codes of practice in place how people are supposed to do that. But of course, this are is an industry that happens in the dark at, at night, like right out, you know, in the huge Australian bush. So what we see in so movies is correct. People go out in their in their utes yes. with the big lights yes. and they shoot them in the dark. Yes, yes. And then because an industry is developed off the back of that, they eviscerate, like they kind of butcher them in the bush and they hang them back on that ute and they bounce around in the dark until, you know, a couple of hours after sunrise and they put them in the chiller. But also, um, if, you're, if you're shooting something in the dark, yes. your accuracy would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? It is bad, yeah. Look, uh, some whistle... You know, one of the interesting things about docker making is people come forward and tell their stories, not the sort of general media stories, but like, oh, this is really happening next to my land. And they're saying, like, they think there's, like, between 35 and 40% of, uh, of missed shots going on where, you know, kangaroos might get hit in the shoulder or something, and for a couple of weeks they have to kind of deal with that, of course, mm. with no-one looking after it because they're wildlife and uh, you know die a slow death so we you know we were shocked and kind of saddened to find out some of the cruelty and you know the things that are going on in the bush yeah how did Australians react to the documentary yeah there was a big reaction in Australia of course I mean honestly the people who saw the film which is you know a really wide variety of voices really were very very interested but there is a kind of cultural paradigm of kind of hate as well so yeah, there was a lot of, you know, hoo-ha. <laughs> Why can't they be farmed? 
They can't be farmed. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't it solve problems if they could farm? You could farm them. Yeah. So it is a wild life, you know, and it's mm -hmm. something we can't control. And they can obviously they can leap over huge fences and everything. So that's kind of a crazy thing at the beginning. But they also have a muscle myopathy, which they I think I've had guinea pigs like this too, where if something frightens them, they do die. So mm. yeah, it's a, they've never been able to be farmed. So everything, you know, every time you buy a product with kangaroo in it, it is wildlife just shot in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Geez, what a fascinating subject. Okay, so who did you use? Did you have experts in that that helped you make this? Yeah, well, this people film? like uh, Terry Irwin, who's a, you know Steve Irwin's yeah. uh, widow. She is a fant fantastic uh, advocate for uh, kangaroos and just really sees the value in them. And she actually farms massive properties. Uh, that uh, work with coexistence around um, kangaroos and um, agriculture, you know, cows and sheep and that. But also there's a fantastic guy in uh, outside of Alice Springs called uh, Kangaroo Dundee, who is quite famous now because he has his own BBC show and Nat Geo show. And he raises orphan joeys, so it's the cutest Aww. show imaginable. Wow. Yeah, And we visited him and, of course, it's pretty cute oh. visiting him and seeing all these little things. So... I mean, I guess one of the highlights for us was filming kangaroos in the wild. They are, I mean, if any New Zealanders can come across and see that, it's, they're magnificent. They're like 60 kilometres an hour, they can run that fast wow. with these massive, seemingly massive babies attached to their pouch, you know. Wow. So keep on pouch. going. Yeah. Kate, yeah. thank you so much. It's uh, a pleasure. It's been yeah. a pleasure chatting with you today. Kate's award-winning documentary, Kangaroo, is currently playing around the country. You can check out the website for details. Yeah, really important subject and beautifully shot as well. It's a must-see.